I think going to networking events, um, you know, or being in a network of virt virtual group, yeah. um, you know, being on a board, things that show people that you're either you get to talk about your business or that you have an expertise because you wouldn't be on a board without some sort of expertise. Hey, everybody. Today, I'm super excited to be joined by my friend and marketer extraordinaire, Chris Keen. If you don't know Chris, she is the founder and chief brand officer of Simply K2 Marketing, where she brings over 25 years of experience building brand awareness, launching new products, increasing sales, and building engagement for consumer-facing businesses, also known as CPG. Before starting her own business, Chris spent 15 years on the agency side, and she trans transitioned over to the client side to pursue her love of B2C marketing and branding development. Chris, welcome to the hey show. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much. I'm a longtime listener. Like Thank I've you. listened to, I think, every single episode and a biggest fan, but not in the Kathy Bates kind of way. <laughs> Well, that's reassuring. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So Chris and I actually had the pleasure of meeting in person last year at the Inbound Conference um, through a mutual friend of ours, Christina. Yes. And also from AMA Boston. Yes. Uh, a guest. So yes. I've yes. known about you and indirectly had conversations, but I got to meet you face to face at Inbound. So exciting. And we had so much fun hunting for food one day. <laughs> yes. And you were in your rainbow outfit, which Thanks. I'm telling you, you've got style, girl. You talk oh, about it on the podcast you. that you do not, but I'm here to tell everybody she does. I like really bright colors. I don't know if they match. I just wear them because I like rainbows. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> rainbows and sparkles. <laughs> I haven't grown out of my younger self. So, Chris, first questions first. What made you decide to do this whole thing and be an agency owner? Sure. So... I always knew in college that I wanted to be in marketing. Um, however, I am not some math genius and calculus was not going to happen. <laughs> and it was required to get a marketing degree. Uh, so I went the communications route. But the first job out of college, I actually went right into an agency. Um, and I went, I was stayed on the agency side, both on the East Coast and West Coast for over a decade, really 15 years. Um, but in 2007, I really was getting tired of the grind where, you know, you get assigned to clients that you might not understand and can't disseminate the information into something easy that's marketable. Like I always also got the finance clients and some really oh. <laughs> diverse healthcare. But then the other piece is the volatility of the agency side of the business where you lose a client and you could you could be the best person they have there and you can still be let go because it's just, mm -hmm. you know, economics. Mm -hmm. So I took a six month hiatus. I wasn't sure whether I even wanted to stay in the business. I was like, this is, I can't do this. I'm done. Um, fun fact, I almost launched a side hustle that I had that were greeting cards, oh, but wow. I, <laughs> I kept missing the the pull of marketing and advertising. Like I'd see all these ads on TV. I'm like, Oh, that's so good. I'm like, Oh, I really enjoyed doing that. So I decided to sort of start my own business as a side hustle. I had one client doing their newsletters, um, not even digitally, uh, still have that client today and started to work with recruiters to get me on the client side. I really wanted to, you know, focus and, redirect my energies towards um, B2C um, because I kept getting, again, put in the B2B side. And I just, I feel like I resonate more with consumer marketing because I'm a consumer mm -hmm. and really just, you know, even smaller businesses that we sometimes would get. Um, and then fast forward to the, you know, pandemic Right before everything closed, I literally decided I'm going to go full in both feet, not knowing we're about to shut down. Oh, no. Um, that said, I was never busier. So while everyone was sitting back on the couch and being like Netflix binging and, you know, whatnot, no, I was working my butt off. Um, I've never been busier. And because there were businesses, especially the small businesses that were trying to find ways to, you know, continue to survive and they wanted to work with someone that wasn't some big agency and they liked that I was also a small business and understand that. Um, 
So here I am. I've been in business over 16 years since 2008 um, and full time since, you know, 2020. Uh, I love it. Yeah. Well, I know you love it. And you can tell just because you're like, you said you're, you're sitting there watching commercials and you're like, oh, that's so good. Meanwhile, I feel like most of the commercials I watch, I'm like, who did they, who gave, who gave approval on this? This is terrible. <laughs> right. There's some out there right now that I don't, I don't understand. There were some even in the Super Bowl. I'm like, um, I was like okay, you spent what? Six million? <laughs> so. Crazy. Uh, so what kind of clients do you serve today? They're B2C clients, but give us kind of a, an inner look at what your client makeup looks like. Sure. So um, as you said, I primarily work with that B2C retail, consumer-focused small business. I also work with entrepreneurs, and I really enjoy working with some startups, people who, you know, from that startup position, they have really maybe no experience in marketing. They have no brand, you know, um, or positioning or any of those things. So those are the ones I really like taking a deep dive and doing a really thoughtful brand exploration with them. And then from that going into, you know, a marketing strategy, and then, you know, maybe it's also a website and developing or initiating their social media. For those businesses that are small businesses and entrepreneurs that have been in existence, I really work with people who have a little bit of knowledge about uh, marketing and they've been throwing things out there that has kept them, you know, alive, but really aren't seeing the growth that they want or the engagement really. Cause I think that's the most important thing that I think people forget it's engagement mm -hmm. because you're saying things that are resonating with your target audience. So yes. again, I can implement some brand, brand exp exploration or positioning because sometimes that's really the the key part that's missing. They just threw it out there and didn't really know who they are or why they're different, which candidly for small businesses, that seems to be the biggest hurdle. Like, how are you different from somebody else? Like, what makes you special? You you need to define that in some way. And what is your business? Like, even the business description sometimes is fuzzy and gray. Yeah. Um, but I offer full-on marketing strategy, the occasional website, um, the brand exploration. And then I will occasionally add social media. I kind of have to like you. <laughs> but I have to credit your show because I was really on the fence and it was Jamie Tisdale, Teasdale, yes. excuse me, yeah. that almost gave me permission through the airwaves <laughs> that I did not have to do social media anymore, which was really like eye-opening because I it made me niche down yeah I love that you say that because I, I feel like I've heard a lot of people come forward and say that Jamie's show meant a lot to them because she was like look you don't have to do it and I'm not doing it and I never looked back <laughs> and so good for you for taking that advice um and not looking back because social media is just continuing to get hard but today super hard you were going to talk about like the referrals, right? How yeah. word of mouth business? How do we put this right? Referrals, word of mouth business. I'll be really honest. I'm looking forward to this conversation because most of our business comes from referrals. But as I've noticed, and you've noticed, and as we've talked about, and I'm sure a lot of you who are watching or listening have noticed, referrals are a little harder to come by right now, just because of the way things are. Last year was tough. This year's tough. You know, there's a lot of layoffs happening in the tech world, unfortunately. Um, when we've talked to our clients, they're on, uh, you know, hiring freezes and bud budget freezes. So, Again, I'm excited to have this conversation. I'm taking a deep breath because I know I need to listen to everything you have to say. But what what's your overall take? When you start to notice a decline in referrals, what do you initially think about? What do you start doing, Chris, to boost those, either your own or your client's visibility? So I want to be upfront that it hasn't been until recently that I've had to rely on referrals. Um, I'm just not comfortable with the hard sell. Um, mm -hmm. And so for me, my clients have primarily come to me in a very organic way where we're literally just talking. So for instance, if you were a business um, and we met at Inbound and but you were thinking about marketing, but why not? But we met and we just kind of hit it off. You might reach out to me just because we've talked about what I do. And it sounds like hey, I kind of liked her and this could be a good fit. Um, 
but you know, I did notice in the last year, ironically, after <laughs> after the pandemic, I I am needing to put myself out there more. Um, and what I do and what I recommend my clients do is is literally be showing the value of your business or what you can provide to your prospects um, and customers through social media, um, LinkedIn. But I actually do feed on the ground as one of my core um, tips because I think going to networking events, um, you know, or being in a network of your virtual group, yeah. um, you know, being on a board, things that show people that you're either you get to talk about your business or that you have an expertise because you wouldn't be on a board without some sort of expertise. Mm -hmm. um, and that has led to two things, um, you know, happening organically. Um, or conversely, the other thing I offer is a 30 minute consultation. It's very broad. Um, or I will sit down and you can book a brainstorming session. So you get a little taste of what I can do because I'm talking about your business specifically, or, you know, with the consultation, it is much broader. Like, Hey, I don't, I see that you're not on social media. Um, and you know, I think there needs to be a full mix of mm -hmm. social media and others. I just want to put that out there because we talk so much about social media. I know this is put on the social media examiner, but there needs to be a, a foundation of traditional marketing concepts when you're talking about, you know, working with clients and how you approach any marketing strategy. At least that's my perspective. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. And I, you said something about the in real life, right? As soon as you started talking about like networking groups and boards, I assumed they're IRL in real life. Maybe they're virtual. But yes. touch on that a little bit more because that's a self-promotion tactic. You're looking at that strategically, those networking groups, those events. Like is inbound part of that? strategic self-promotion tactics or but talk about this because I feel like you know sometimes as marketers and especially like everything's remote now we get stuck in our little digital world and we forget that there's like a whole real world outside of the door so can you talk about that a little bit sure so I have to be upfront. I live on an island <laughs> so I live Literally on Marcus an island. <laughs> so <laughs> so some of my ear in, in real life is a little limited um, and I go to inbound and for in, for me inbound is more from the educational standpoint because there's just okay. so many people. So sometimes it's just a little overwhelming. You know, what is it, Brooke? There's like five to more like 10,000 people that attend. Yeah, I want to say it was like 10 or 12,000 people this year. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I, I wish that there was a little bit more component of the networking in a structured way mm. because it has, it, how it works now is a little bit more organic. And sometimes that just it's hard to do when you're like trying to rush to the next session. Yeah. Um, so I actually am part of several virtual women's networking groups. Um, and we have the opportunity to talk about our business. Um, one I was in literally you could bring up a, a problem to a small group of about 12 people. Um, and you talk about whatever that problem is or more about your business. Cause there's also that Hey, give us your elevator pitch. Yeah. Um, I actually did get two clients through that. And one literally was I gave my elevator pitch and then pops up in the chat, really like what you had to say. I'd really like to talk to you about your business. And I hadn't said anything but my elevator pitch. So, you know, but it is that back and forth and it is getting to know these people. Um, I just think that any good relationship, and that's really what it boils down to when you're working with a client, comes to communication. Yeah. You know, I think I think you'd agree, you know, so that's why for me that one on one is almost more important than just putting out a social media post that has like, hey, you know, self-promotion is icky. I get it. You know, <laughs> not that those are bad because I just put that out there. But, right. you know, it it gives a little bit more depth. There's a real person behind the brand or the company. Well, let's talk about content marketing a little bit because you touched on social media, but obviously there are much many other mediums or channels which you can do content marketing on. How do you feel about content marketing as a way to enhance your agency or your client's agencies to self-promote? Are you on board with that? Do you disagree with that? What's your feeling? What are your feelings there? Um, so I'm really a big fan of the long form communication and my content. Um, so last quarter, um, it took me a while to 
get over you're the marketing expert. It has to be perfect on your first go out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I launched an email marketing um, newsletter. I hate to just narrow it down to newsletter because I'd liked it to be, it doesn't have to always be in the newsletter that goes out. Yeah. But it is marketing tips and topics that are important to small business owners. I've done one about owned, paid, and earned media. One about when you should hire a marketing professional, um, whether that be contract or, you know, full time. Um, I've only sent out about like three, but I continuously trying to find things that are pain points. So my next one will be about self-promotion. And while it might be icky, it's really a necessary evil. Um, yes. In there, I also have resources um, and tools. I actually featured your podcast in my in, yeah. my inaugural <laughs> episode just to plug you again (laughs) I promised I was a guest that this is not a paid thing no Um, I love it I love it though because you so I love what you're saying about like so you're going to talk about self-promotion the next time you could link to the show not that you have to but I've been starting to give a bit video option in my newsletter um and I've noticed that we've gotten a better click-through rate because a lot of times instead of reading I do a long-form newsletter quarterly actually so it's very long and very in-depth um but a lot of people will click over and watch that video because it's it's easier, you know, I can work and listen to what Brooke's saying about this this topic versus like reading the newsletter. So just an idea. I think you could put a, a, like a link to this video in your newsletter on self-promotion and they could actually hear you and see you and feel your expertise, right? It's just, there's something about video and Listen, I'll be the first to say I hated video for so long, but there's Mm -hmm. something about video. Like right now, I feel closer to you than when we email or we chit chat on LinkedIn, right? Because I can see you, I can hear you. Maybe we're old, but (laughs) that feels that feels good to me. So I love that you're including like those little, you know, snippets for people to watch videos inside of your newsletters. Yeah, I'm I'm trying. And for me, the Email newsletter is going out about twice a month. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Jay Swedelson. Yeah. Um, do this. You know, so one of his big things, he wants you to do an email I know, every, every week. week. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's not happening. So I literally started out with plan doing one and everyone's like, oh, it's not going to be seen. But I, you know, I, I know that you asked for advice later, but I always go with progress over perfection. And that has yeah. been my mantra for the last three months. Um, you need to do something that you can sustain and continue to deliver. Um, and I almost put a video for Jay when he talked about last month the emails, how uh, Google and Yahoo had changed their process. Yes, and, I listened and to how his you podcast. need to be ready. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I find that the the blogs allow me to go deeper than me just posting something short on LinkedIn. Um, and social. And, you know, I love your point of view. I think when you post on LinkedIn, um, it, it almost lends a little bit more credibility because of the space that it is being shared on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so answer me this, Mm -hmm. as we talk about this topic, which are referrals, word of mouth, and as they're slowing, or maybe they're not slowing for you, which is great, but if they're slowing for you, because I've noticed uh, they're slowing slowdown. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> starting starting last year, the referrals slowed a little bit. You talked about networking. So for those people who are listening or watching, how can we reimagine networking with the goal of creating new opportunities, right? So you said you went to Inbound to learn, but right, this, this opportunity came yes. about be- just because of there. So what like three tips would you give for someone who is going to try that networking piece of self-promotion or finding opportunities? Sure. So I think you need to be very clear on what you do as a business and mm-hmm. who your target audience is. You need, it's always a, a squishy spot because people think it's everybody. But if at the end of the day, you had to pick one person that is consistently coming back and hiring you or buying from you, that really should be your target audience. And there are other opportunities for other people, but that is your core target audience. I also think you need to be brave and be honest about, hey, I'm looking for new opportunities. Here is exactly the type of client I like, who I like to work with. You know, if you want to say I've worked with, uh, you know, five others in this industry, that always lends credibility that you have um, knowledge and expertise, but you need to 
literally just sort of, as one person said, put your big girl panties on for all the women out there and, and, you know, say, hey, if you hear of anybody, I'm looking for this type of business. Um, Yeah. Because if you're not asking, the answer is always going to be no. And you're mm-hmm. not going to get those people coming in unless you say, hey, I'm looking. you know. Mm-hmm. And also put that out on your social media channels. I know we're talking about in-person networking, but also put that out there. I have an opening for X number of spaces for this type of client. Yes. Let's talk about this. Because I know you and I are very similar in that like, we are not Carsman aggressive salespeople, no. right? Um, <laughs> my advice from Christina, who we hired on as a consultant, um, was to be Brooke, but more out loud. In other words, she's like, you need to start, you know, being not aggressive, but just being a little more assertive in yes. how you present yourself and how you present B-squared media. So for people who are listening who are like us, and it feels – I've seen people do it on social media. I see it on LinkedIn all the time. Like I have three spots open this year for a client or whatever it is. But for us, I know it feels a little like, oh, my shoulders start to like go up towards my ears (laughs) and I get like butterflies in my tummy and I'm like, oh God, this is so not me. But like discuss how and why getting over that hump is so important for social media. And have you seen any success on uh, platforms specifically for you or your clients? Um. So for your first part of the question, um, it's a work in progress. So again, I, I, I literally hammer back to progress over perfection, keep testing things and, you know, pitches to someone to help you find somebody, um, you know, see what feels right for you, you know, and if you absolutely are not comfortable, (laughs) you know, speaking to someone out loud, then, you know, then fall back on that, you know, post that's on social media or LinkedIn that you're looking. Um, Mm -hmm. Know where, though, if you're going to post online, where your target audience is. So, for instance, B2B, excuse me, LinkedIn is, you know, where you would think that you would get most of your clients because that's where all the businesses are and they're looking. For me, my businesses are actually sort of watching things on my social media channel. So I've had to increase that strategy so that I'm mixing in value with like every fifth post. So that four to one ratio is about selling my own business and actually hourly just saying, hey, (laughs) I want to work with you. You know, do you want to work with me? Um, I have found that if you do some sort of video, like you said, that is huge in getting more eyeballs on you. But I get sometimes you just need to start small. And sometimes... As much as I am not a big fan of those posts, you can do that like, hey, and like have a little flirt, (laughs) you know? Hello. Like the Vanna White post. (laughs) Pick me. (laughs) Yeah. But start that way or start with a, you know, a selfie or someone takes your photo and you could have copy, you know, there. Um, But again, it is a work in progress. No one is going to fault you for being, you know, your authentic self. If anything, I would hope that you attract someone that understands that like, hey, this is hard for you too. It's hard for me, but you have the knowledge I know to help me over this hump. But I I really don't think anyone wants to work with someone that's sell, 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 sell. I mean, sure, there are probably people out there, but that's just not who I want to work with. I want a collaboration. I want my whole discussion part, that one-on-one is also getting a feel for who you are. So it's almost like, I don't know if you feel the same, but it's like when you're interviewing for a job, Mm -hmm. I take that same approach sometimes when I'm talking to a potential client, especially in my consultation calls, because I know that they're trying to see if I might be a right fit. Well, it's the same to you. I want to understand who you are, how, what your expectations might be and things like that. So it's, Interview sounds too formal, but there's still that back and forth and that communication so that can you collaborate well? You know, what, you know, are your values? Do your values align with, you know, me? Like, are you looking for someone 24 seven? Because that's not me because I'm doing more consultative work versus being hired full time. Right. Um, And like I said, from a channel perspective, just to touch on that last piece, I use a mix of, um, social from I I'm really on Instagram Mm -hmm. um and 
you know, LinkedIn, but I am really putting a lot of effort into the email because that's where I think I will have a lot more conversion because it goes more in depth, Yeah. but also because it's owned. And, yes. you know, we've talked about this, or rather you've talked about this on your podcast that social media could like stop tomorrow and you'd have no, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Like, they could block your account and you have no you know, there's nothing for you can do. You know, I don't know if anyone else tried to get a hold of them online, yeah. but it's impossible. Yeah, so it's impossible. And I love that you're saying owned. I think that's so important. I am still hearing stories of people who either don't have an email list or really haven't just nurtured their email list. And I'm like, has Twitter taught you nothing? Like, you need to <laughs> have something that's owned that's yours so that, you know, and if everything goes away or everything becomes pay to play and they start, you know, um, f pushing out small businesses who can't afford whatever it is that the pay to play may be, you've got, you don't want to just be stuck with nothing. You've got to have something. So I, I love that yeah. you put an emphasis on owned. And I also think what you were saying about the interview, what I felt like you were saying were was two things. You have to be vulnerable right? And this is something a lot of uh, people are having a hard time getting behind. But I think when you're vulnerable and you share, like you said, values and what you're looking for, and you're very honest about mm -hmm. those things, it leads to better collaborations and partnerships. And then I also heard you say research. Like how many times, well, in my case, you know, we've interviewed a lot of people, we've we've hired a lot of people, and the people who come to that interview saying, you know, oh, I researched this and I read your article on that, they automatically lift themselves up in that process. So to set yourself out with clients who you're pitching, do the homework, do the homework, yes. have that research there. So if you're vulnerable and you've done your homework, you have a, a higher chance of, of winning that pitch. Yeah, I try to, you know, and, and when you talk about research, I just want to clarify that I don't think that you have to do this like term paper kind of research, right. but be familiar for me when I'm talking to you, I've done at least a view of your social media and your website. And, you know, I've almost done a little mini audit and, and I will find a little gaps like, hey, are you utilizing this? Um, so I think that's important. And I, 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 I want to defend the, <laughs> some of the people that haven't maybe used email because it took me quite some time <laughs> to get my own. Um, my personal um, roadblock, and I think this might resonate with others, was do I have enough to say? You know, mm. and I also struggled with that. Um, in per you know, is what I'm putting out there, you know, valuable? You know or it has to be perfect my first time out, you know, and I'm the marketing expert. So it has to be all frilly and beautiful. And I, I literally hired an email coach, even though I literally teach other people to build their email list because I was having such a roadblock. So I don't think there's also shame in saying, Hey, I know I can probably do this, but I can use some help. Um, yeah. But it is definitely something, especially now that I'm using it. I, I even see more value that you you do need to make sure that you have a list that if everything else fails, you still have this core group of people that you're reaching out to. Yeah. And I love that advice of, hey, I may do email for other people, but I needed a coach to help me kind of get there for myself. I get that. It is so hard to talk about yourself or talk about your own business when you're the type of people that that Chris and I are, which is, you know, not super salesy people. But I love sales, by the way. I am a salesperson. <laughs> That's just not my sales style. So right. when it comes to talking about myself, I'm like you, I kind of clam up. And so I love that you're giving permission, if you are listening or watching, to you may be a social media expert or an email expert or an advertising expert. It's okay to bring in another expert to help you. It's Christina, right? We yeah. we do social care. We do social media customer service. 
that's what Christina's strong suit is. And we brought her in to kind of like double check our work <laughs> and tell us like, hey, are we as smart as we think we are? <laughs> or should we like, you know, get smarter in some areas? Um, so I love that advice. Let's talk about public relations a little bit. So sure. I noticed on social media that you've been nominated for a couple of awards. So I want yes. you to tell those stories. Like, how did you get nominated? How'd that come about? And I mean, really, that's in my mind earned media. Somebody nominated you. Yes. You're now having to go out there and say like, hey, vote for me. <laughs> so tell us those stories and then tell us what you think about those kinds of PR moments for, you know, self, self-promotion. self um, So I was nominated for a Plymouth and Cape um, award, uh, which is down here um, on the South Coast in Massachusetts um, as a business to watch. And that required over a like two week period that I gain as many votes as possible. Um, and that meant that I literally had to do a post that said, Hey, vote for me, which uh. <laughs> was super cringy and hard for me to do, even though I was absolutely thrilled that this happened. Um, this I, when I know that who nominated me, um, and I'd been watching this, so I was really excited to get on this list because for me, this gives me more credibility for the Cape and islands. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I serve beyond that, I actually serve clients nationally. The other one is the Boston business women's um, uh, I'm up for best marketing agency, which for me is. Yeah. Like I (laughs) you can super, super excited. Um, And the, the nice thing I want to say between the two, um, the Plymouth and Kate, um, they show you how many votes you have. So it's oh, very wow. pressure filled to see like where you stack up against oh, everybody. Yeah, that would be. Um, I don't see that with the Boston business women. So it's almost a blessing because it, that was adding to this. I've never had to put myself out there, <laughs> but I have to continuously. Uh, this is this is a three week one. Um, ask people to vote for me. And everyone has been very kind and I've gotten so much love on my posts from this because I've shared it on Instagram and also LinkedIn. Um, but it's just, it feels so salesy, like I'm the best. Look at me, look at me. And I'm not, that's just not the kind of person I am. So I, I'm trying to show that like humbleness because I am truly humble that I got nominated. And I don't know who nominated me for this. Um, and actually a friend told me that I had been in the final, that I'm a finalist. Oh, wow. So um, even, like, so have anything she's like, oh, I voted in. for you. I'm like, what are you talking what? about? <laughs> so, <laughs> so she's like, oh, my God, I thought it was you. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, that I, I'm not going to say even for marketers, it's not easy to put ourselves out there in some, like a situation like that. But I, you really do need to try to push through because this is a this is an accomplishment. This is an accolade that is worth sharing because it says that someone else has called this out. So it's almost that double assured that sure you're self-promoting yourself and you're doing your own PR, but it wasn't like you manufactured this on your own. So right. someone else is saying that. Um, I think, you know, even in marketing, we have challenges getting reviews in the sense of traditional businesses like a restaurant. Everyone will go to Google and do reviews. I actually even build <laughs> Google business profiles for people and you know I am, I think I have like one review right now and, and I go, well, does that make me look less, but it's just, our industry doesn't allow or doesn't, I don't know the allow is the wrong word, but like, doesn't, you know, promote that as much. So that's why this is so important for me to be able to say like, Hey, I wouldn't be here unless someone thought this. Right. No, I love that story and the advice that you gave because if you if you're listening or watching and you're a marketing agency owner or a marketer within an agency, these are things that you can go and find pretty easily. Go out to Google and yeah. start, you know, typing in um, you know, marketing awards near me or, you know, uh, you can always look at the big um the big newsletters from like um CMI and AMA and there's a lot of different uh, groups like big groups that will have you know you can sign up for their newsletter and they'll put out like hey voting's open nominate yourself or someone you know etc and I would also say like do a little bit of reciprocity there like go nominate someone like Chris 
and be like, hey, I nominated you because the next time something comes around that you're really good at, Chris may say like, you know what? Brooke nominated me for this. I'm totally going to nominate her for this thing, right? So yeah. I think that's great we, advice. I think together we all su- succeed. And I think that yes. is something that that sometimes is hard to see that, yes, we are competitors, but if we're all lifting each other up, and maybe this is just a, you know, women's you know, feel good thing. But like, I think women do a much better job of supporting their fellow business owners um, and are willing to like say, Hey, I know you're a competitor, but like, let's, let's succeed together. Because like you said, there could be rep, 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 rep uh, I can't even say the word. <laughs> Rep-ra- reprocity. Oh God. I know you're yeah. like, uh, reprocity. Yeah. No, <laughs> I think a, a rising tide lifts all boats. That's exactly. the mentality that I have. I know not everybody is, uh, you know, um, subscribes to that, but that's the mentality I have. And I think you deserve those awards and I really hope you get them. I voted for you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Let's talk about um, your reputation, right? Because even you, Chris, your your and me, Brooke, our, our personal reputations are tied to the brand's reputation. So how do you build upon or even just maintain that reputation when you're focusing more on self-promotion because we're saying it's a fine line from being like too salesy to being like oh my gosh I got nominated for this thing please vote for me because this is that this is a big deal like how do you walk that line um I think it's 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 challenging I think for me the person that you hire is very similar to the person that I am I mean I I probably am a little ironically a little more outgoing outside of the business or sometimes vice versa. Um, but it's, it comes down to being authentic to who you are and what you bring to the table um, and, and just bring that, that person forward. So I guess, you know, initially, for instance, on social, my one account was my business account. Um, and I've only now created this personal one so that there is like, I can share some, you know, Oh, I really love the fuzzy bear, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's not necessarily business related, but it's cute. Right. It makes my day. Um, but I don't know. I, I think those lines are blurred. I, and I, for me as a business owner, and maybe this isn't true if you are working in a business as an employee, I, I just have to take the tact that what you see is the person that you're going to work with. And I'm very transparent. Um, mm. Even in my pitch decks, I basically lay out because I, I learned sometimes the hard way I've laid out. This is how I work with you. Here's where I'm available. Here's sort of a rough pay structure. Um, so that you know what you're getting into before you even say yes to let's like write up the contract, you know, yeah. and if none of these things work, then, you know, Hey, no harm, no foul. You know, we had a great conversation. Yeah. I think that's really important too, though. And, and what you're hitting on, what I'm hearing you say is that, And I've experienced this too. A lot of marketers, and I think this is why we get so scared about being like salesy, a lot of marketers have a facade. It's a character. They're one person online and they're a completely different person in the real world. So when it comes time to work with them, they're not warm and fuzzy. They're not as, you know, go-getter as you think. They can't stick to a time schedule. So – Maybe that's why we are so scared to be a little more aggressive, assertive, whatever the word is we're going to use, um, online because we don't want people to think that what you see there is not what you're going to get. So I I completely, if that's what you're saying, <laughs> I completely <laughs> align with that. I think that is a fear of mine. I am really like, you've met me now in person. Like, this is me. This is me. Yes. I'm silly. I'm goofy. I'm exactly, you know, what you what you see, how I talk. That's what you get. Um, but a lot of people aren't like that. And I think that's maybe why we feel a little bit nervous about being so pushy online. I agree. Although I will tell you that when you work with me and we have t- <laughs> timelines. I come from the agency world where, you know, you meet timelines and, you know, you miss them. Hey, there's only so much I can do to make this up. So, right. you know, I am upfront about like, that's probably where I'm the strictest, you know, in terms of like, Hey, I've lined this up, but as long as you know, you know, you can take as much time as you want, but as long as you know that then I can't necessarily make it up. But other than that, really who you are seeing today is who I am and how I, you know, I approach because I guess for me, because I work with small business owners, I'm also a small business owner. So I'm 
you know, even though I am helping you with your marketing, I am also trying to self market myself, Mm -hmm. you know, so I go through these challenges just like you, um, you know, and that's why, like, it really was coming back to bite me (laughs) when, when I started getting uncomfortable showing my face, like, I really want to do a video about this one, my current award that I'm trying to get um, votes for, but I haven't quite gotten to (laughs) that video. So I get it. You know, I I want them to understand that I'm not just here preaching down and this is how you have to do it. And there's only one way, but like, Hey, I get it because I have to do it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So what last question, what is the top piece, the one piece of advice you would give other agencies who are listening or watching right now, if they find themselves in a little bit of trouble right now, because they've been overly reliant on these referrals Yep. And they're in need of a stronger self-promotion strategy. What's the top number one piece of advice you would give them? Um, ironically, it's don't overly worry about the business coming in. Um, what I have found is that I almost stop doing what I normally do to put myself out there. But that desperation does shine through <laughs> when you're talking to a prospective client and inevitably you hire, you get hired or you take on a client that is not at the price you deserve or the quality that you want to have as a client. And I'm not saying that we, the marketers here are not going, like, oh, you're not good enough for me. But, <laughs> you know, there, as a solo promotional business, when you're doing pricing and which is a whole different discussion, like you want to be paid for the value that you know you bring. And when you're in that desperation mode and you're overly worried about the next piece of business coming in, that starts to slide. So Mm -hmm. it's, again, I talked about this earlier, tell people the types of clients that you're looking for, that you're looking for help. Um, I'm also the vein that I don't pay right now other people to send me a referral. I, I would rather, again, you know, all tides lift all boats. Like we all succeed together. Like, so that's, that's my approach. Like if I think you could do a good job on something, I'm going to send them to you. Like, and I don't expect you to pay me amount of money for that. That's just not how I currently run my business. But it, again, it is don't overly worry about it and make sure you know the types of businesses you want to work with and say that out loud. Tell as many people, I mean, tell your friends and family, you never know I mean, my father got me one of my pieces of business through the, the, the Masonic Lodge. So you never know where something's going to come through. Yes. I love that so much. Back when I – different lifetime. I was in real estate. There was a man who came in in his pajamas to look at one of the penthouses. And oh. all of the other leasing agents were like, oh, you can have it. You can take that one. And I was like, fine by me. Never judge a book by its cover. It turned out it was radio personality Tom Joyner, and he leased the penthouse. So, I mean, <laughs> you really don't know. Right. Who's going to bring you that next dollar? So it's kind of like the golden rule. Like, just be kind to everyone. Be open-minded about where things can come from. But also be steadfast, like you said. is like, this is my ICP. These are my prices. And don't deviate from that because that will really only do you a disservice. Um, well, this has been fantastic. And uh, I think it's very good advice for people who are like us. And again, just, you know, don't want to be overly salesy or promotional. But last question here, can you tell everyone how can they find you? You mentioned Instagram. What are you working on? What's your website? Like where should people go connect with Chris? Uh, so you can connect with me uh, through my website, uh, s- simply K, the number two, marketing, M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G dot com. Um, there is a contact form. I also have a pop-up to sign up for my newsletter. It's good. There's no spam, promise. <laughs> um, I am on Instagram at simply K2 Marketing, but marketing is abbreviated. So simply K2 MKTG. And then Chris Keen on LinkedIn. Um, but I am working on trying to show a little bit more of the work that I've been doing. And I try to I want to work more again on showcasing some of those on social so people get a better sense of what I might be able to do for you. I'm so excited. I've been here though. Fantastic. Yes. I'm so excited. We got to chat again. Um, It feels like IRL, even though it's not, but I'm so glad we got to chat. I'm so glad you got to tell everybody what you do, how you're doing it, all the cool networking ways and, you know, just how to boost self-promotion. Thank you so much for joining us and everybody who's watching or listening. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much, Brooke.